Hey everyone, welcome back to Highway to Hell, and today we're going to talk about a reprint, actually, of some old Ghost Rider stories that was reprinted recently in Marvel Tales Ghost Rider number one. I love these Marvel Tales books that, uh, that you know, Marvel's been doing lately. I think they have a Wolverine one coming up soon, too, or maybe it's already out by now, um, but they are fantastic, and they reprint. Uh, we did a Venom one, obviously, we talked about it in the Venom vlog. They reprint, like, three older stories that feature the characters um, that, uh, that might introduce audiences to these you know characters so obviously the main book Ghost Rider focuses on Danny Ketchelot and you're kind of seeing his journey but you're not you're seeing Johnny's journey as well but he's already a Ghost Rider he's the king of hell he's already like I said at the top of the food chain and Danny's at the bottom so you know this is basically them telling stories when Johnny was kind of near closer to the bottom of his journey and working his way up um, so I like that I like that they put this out I mean obviously I always wish they would do a Marvel Tales and they would put some classic Dan Ketch stories in there but having these uh, you know are actually pretty good because they picked three really solid stories um, I really dig this uh, they the first one was Ghost Rider number 68 where you kind of get a retelling of the origin of Ghost Rider from Johnny Blaze's perspective where they changed a few things um, some of the changes I like some of them I don't uh, you know I, I would say um, you know I, I like I kind of like the story that we kind of get later where they kind of simplified it in the movie I think did a little bit of a better job with it as well with his dad and stuff uh, you know as far as simplifying the story I know the movie wasn't great but as far as simplifying that origin I think it they took out some of the convoluted stuff and I felt like this added a little bit of convolutedness to it um, but Roger Stern overall did a good job and the pencils were by Bob Budiansky which for you Transformer fans, that's the guy at Marvel that took on the job of naming all the Transformers and drawing them up and stuff. Uh, so Bob Budiansky, I'm a huge fan of that guy. And um, like I said, he, you know, he was working at Marvel in the 80s when they brought him the line of, uh, you know, uh, Takara Tomy toys. And they were like, hey, this is Convoy. This is, you know, these are all the characters. Can you, you know, name them? And I guess they went through three other people before they got to Bob. And Bob said, sure. And he came up with Optimus Prime and uh, Cybertron and the backstory to it. So, uh, so it's cool to have a, a legend like him for me, you know, and Transformers uh, also be the guy who drew this issue because the art is fantastic. And, and there's this great um, intro by um, Ralph Macchio as well, uh, not the Karate Kid Ralph Macchio, um, but Ralph here was like an editor at Marvel for a very long time. So it was cool to see him do like a foreword and talk about some of this stuff. Uh, and then we get this, uh, you know, Ghost Rider 68 cover, so amazing. And it's kind of the the terrible curse of Johnny Blaze, as they put it on the cover. And it's uh, featuring the all new retelling of the origin of Ghost Rider. Um, so the book is really great. It's, it has this uh, priest and it opens up with this priest. It's a massive storm outside and Johnny Blaze shows up and he's like, hey, I'm sorry, Father, my, my bike broke down. Um, I just need somewhere to go. And he's like, can I come in and talk to you? And then they start talking and you know, he's like, you know what? I think it's time I, I have a confession. I need to make a confession. So the priest is like, okay, my son, like come over here, let's talk. And so they're going back and forth and Johnny starts uh, losing it. He's like snapping and he's like, the, the priest says something that triggers Johnny and he's like getting upset. And the priest is like, okay, I don't, I, I didn't, you know, I don't want to get involved with a nutcase. You know, I just thought I was letting someone in who needed help. He goes, but I got to get out of here. I wasn't supposed to be here this long. And you're like, what's the priest talking about? And then while he's doing that, Johnny Blaze is retelling his origin. He's like basically confessing. He's like, I want you to know who I am. He goes, so my, my mom, I never really knew. Obviously, we're going to find out later that her name is Barbara Ketch and that she uh, birthed another son, Danny Ketch. So that, that makes her and Johnny, or it makes Danny and Johnny half brothers, essentially. Um, so, uh, but also, you know, she's, she's out of the picture. So he doesn't, he's like, I don't know my mom. He goes, and my dad, he, uh, he died. Uh, you know, we worked for this, like a motorcycle circus, traveling circus thing. And my dad died. And he goes, so, um, so I didn't really have any parents. So this couple, um, you know, took me in crash Simpson and his, uh, and his wife, Mona and their daughter, Roxy, who was like my childhood friend. And he's like, uh, so those were like the three people in my life. So they kind of became my stepmom and stepdad. And then so uh, then one day I was out testing a motorcycle. It went wrong. I was able to push Roxy off because she was riding with me and I pushed her to safety. But the, the you know, the motorcycle crashed into a tree. And then when Roxy's mom, Mona, came over to, to pick me up, help me get up off the ground, uh, the motorcycle exploded and it killed it, it like injured her so badly that she eventually died slowly and her wish before she died was that I no longer ride anymore because you know because I don't she didn't want me to put her daughter's life at risk or even her husband crash's life at risk so D Johnny made a, a promise to her to not uh, you know to not do that to not drive or ride a bike anymore so they cut back to present day and he's talking to the priest and the priest like but you arrived here in a bike and he's like yes I know I broke my promise I'm getting there let me tell you why um, 
And then so, you know, so then you see Johnny just became a mechanic for the circus and he helped Crash out. And Crash was, like I said, kind of like his surrogate father and his daughter Roxy was there. And so uh, so Johnny would just fix up the motorcycle after each, you know, uh, time that they displayed it. Because he was like a, a like an evil Knievel type Crash Simpson. So he'd like ramp over, you know, a car, park cars and stuff like that or, or whatever. And uh, I think in the movie they made it like helicopters with spinning blades. They made it like really dangerous. Um, so anyway, so that was kind of his thing. And he's like, all right, so I stayed with the family. I felt bad because I felt responsible for their mom's death um, and uh, and you know because I was a stupid kid you know whatever I feel like the family would have cast him aside after that I don't know why they decided to stay with him or have him stay with them or whatever uh, but whatever that's where I feel like the convolutedness comes in because in the movie it was simple his dad uh, had cancer and he decided that he would, you know, make a deal with the devil to save his dad from the cancer. When you add in all this stuff and, and surrogate families and all this, it's like, oh, it's nice. It adds a little bit of depth in some regard, but it, it doesn't simplify it either too much. And so Crash has cancer, much like his dad did in like the original or whatever, but uh, but now they're, you know, they're updating it. And so Crash has cancer and they're scared because they have a Madison Square Garden. They were finally able to book it. Biggest venue, you know, around at the time, especially uh, especially for stuff like this. And they're like, we, we're going to go. We're going to do this amazing motorcycle show in front of everybody, but I can't do it. Uh, doctors aren't giving me long to live because of cancer. So Johnny Blaze is like, no, I can't. I already feel responsible for the, their mom being gone. I want to make a deal with the devil to save, you know, Crash uh, from dying of cancer. So, of course, Mephisto shows up. They make a deal, and he's like, all right, but I'm going to want something in return from you one day. So, sure, sign here, and, you know, and I'll be gone. So he does, and then he does tell Roxy, hey, I did make a deal with the devil. Your dad, that's why he doesn't have cancer anymore. Uh, so she's like, okay, and there's all these books on the occult. So she starts reading them. And Johnny's like trying to because he wants to get rid of whatever Mephisto did to him. Uh, but, you know, but actually Roxy, she's the one who really hit the books and really tried to learn. Uh, and so while that's all happening, Crash is now back to full health and he's doing this thing in front of Madison Square Garden. And of course, he uh, performs his stunt and it goes wrong and he dies. And that's when, you know, Johnny is like screaming like, no, this wasn't part of the deal. I I said save him. And Mephisto says, yes, you said save him from cancer. Uh, but, you know, I, you know, he made a mistake and he miscalculated and he died just like a, a any other person would die and he goes so that wasn't part of our deal and he goes but now that you know our end is held up or my end he goes now your end it, it's time for you so he starts infecting Johnny with his mind and getting in there and putting in the spirit of vengeance and that's when Roxy shows up she says a couple of magic words that she read from the books and it was able to you know cast Mephisto away so it's hard to say like if, if the ritual was fully completed maybe that's why Johnny and the spirit of vengeance go back and forth as opposed to him just constantly being a ghostwriter I never thought about that I was like oh that, that could be interesting but they don't really touch on that here. It was just a thought I had when I was reading this. Uh, but anyway, meanwhile, it cuts back to modern times. And he's telling the priest, yeah, so I'm the ghostwriter. And the priest is like, what? The ghostwriter? And he goes, yes, I'm not only just the ghostwriter, but I'm here for you, Father. And the priest is like, what are you talking about? And then that's when Johnny turns into, you know, the spirit of vengeance, ghostwriter himself. And starts chasing down the the you know the uh, the father here the padre I almost called him and uh, he he's chasing him down. You find out that this priest is actually not a real priest. He killed a priest and left his body on the side of the road where Ghost Rider came across because Ghost Rider can almost sense when sin has happened. And he found this guy dying, and his dying words were, "Yeah, I'm a, I'm a priest at this place up the street. There's a lot of valuables in there, and some guy killed me, and now he's dressed as." the priest of that church and he's going in there tonight uh you know to steal everything so that's what johnny blaze is doing here he's actually there he's confessed his whole life to the priest let him know who he was and then now he's like there to kill him and then you know he leads him to a train track where the the fake priest falls on the train track and is about to get hit by a train but ghost rider picks him up and he's like yeah you're not you know he's like oh you saved me why would you save me and he goes i'm not saving you he goes you just don't deserve to die he's like because of the sins you've committed he's like so i'm gonna let you live in the perpetual, you know, uh, remembrance of those sins with the, my penance there. And that's when he grabs the guy, looks into his eyes, and every time, every sin the guy has ever committed just plays on a loop in front of him and makes him uh, catatonic, which I think is just the most awesome punishment <laughs> for like bad people. But yeah, you, you think about Ghost Rider and how he can have this ability to, you know, look into and, and, and replay your sins. I think that's such a crazy ability to have. Uh, and it's so intense and it's, it's definitely scary uh, to know that a being out there can do that to people and especially for criminals so if you're thinking of something that criminals uh would be afraid of for Ghost Rider, besides how he looks having that it's like dude he's not here to arrest you he's not here to you know to uh to kill you even he's here to just make you relive all the all the pain you've caused and that is such a wicked punishment and i i, I always love that about Ghost Rider. i think that's such a uh, a just like thing to do to people um but it's weird that he does that um 
you know, being from hell. It's like, it's a weird thing. Cause normally, cause I'm sitting there thinking like, wow, that's so weird that he, you know, he, he, he's from hell and he has these abilities that where he uses them to save people. But I guess that's where the Johnny Blaze element comes in for sure. Um, but that power is like, yeah, I guess he doesn't want to kill bad people because they'll just go to hell and help, you know, Satan or Mephisto's armies grow. So this penance there thing is, is I think much better, you know? So, so yeah, pretty cool stuff. Um, but then the other stuff they put in here, the, the first team up of Spider-Man and Ghost Rider uh, from Marvel Comics team up is in here, which is issue 15. And I love that they reprinted that. So you get to see Mary Jane and Peter on a date and they're going to see the motorcycle extravaganza of the Ghost Rider. Uh, and then you have Roxy's in here too. And, uh, and they all team up to fight a guy named the Orb who has popped up in comics over the, the past couple of years a lot. Uh, I think a lot of people like using him. He's a great D-list villain, but he's actually connected to Ghost Rider. Uh, he used to perform with uh, Crash Simpson. Uh, you know, obviously the Roxanne's dad, the guy who kind of raised Johnny. Um, so they performed together. And so uh, they did. And there was a time where, uh, the, you know, the orb guy, he tried to, you know, crash into Crash Simpson and cause him to get in an accident. But Crash Simpson, being the amazing stunt person that he is, was able to avoid the impact of the motorcycles colliding. And it led the orb to crash and severely mangle his face. And so now he's basically just coming back for revenge. He wants to take over the, you know, the business and, and collect on his 20 years of debt because that happened 20 years ago so he's back to kind of rob the place which kind of doesn't make sense i'm like i don't think they have money they've been stacking up money for the past 20 years um but he just wanted to i guess the act of you know taking down the circus and getting back at crash simpson was kind of his ultimate goal uh but anyway so you know ghost rider chases them into the subway and where they drive towards a train Co -co -co coincidence i don't know maybe uh but then uh, you know they're uh, heading right towards a subway car and it looks like the uh, the you know the orb might have died we know he hasn't obviously uh, he drives right towards it and then disappears and then that's when Ghost Rider abandons his motorcycle and jumps up and catches onto a ledge above and the train runs over his motorcycle so I'm like uh, I, don't, I don't know what that means like uh, I guess his motorcycle can rebuild because it's supernatural to an extent um, but either way it got crushed and, and the book ends with Spider-Man going like all right I guess I'll I'll see you next time we couldn't find the orb we couldn't find his body so maybe he's out there somewhere uh, but if he pops up again let's team up again and take him down and Ghost Rider's like sure enough like that sounds like a good plan so it's kind of neat and then and Spider-Man even like wait a minute did he say that his face with the flames on it is not a mask that, that's actually so this is Spider-Man like learning you know who Ghost Rider is and he's like wait I thought it was a mask with like some kind of like you know pyrotechnic thing on it he goes but it's like a real skull so I thought that was a cool note to end on um and then the last thing they put in here is actually a fun what if story um it's from what if number 28 which was what if daredevil became a member of the age or what if he was an agent of shield member uh which was pretty cool but there was a backup story what if ghost rider separated from johnny blaze and that's what the you know that's what they reprint in here so they don't reprint the whole daredevil story they just print this one um so you have this like mage like this dark magic guy um named azaza or aziza or something like that uh, azazia and he casts a spell where he separates the spirit of vengeance from Johnny Blaze and he himself takes over the spirit of vengeance. And he wants to, he, he needs this ritual. He needs the spirit of vengeance to go into the Vatican and grab the Pope and sacrifice the Pope's life uh, to enact some major ritual. And obviously the Ghost Rider's not going to do that on his own. Um, you know, he's not going to cast out this spell and do all this on his own. So it's a very one in a gajillion chance that this guy is able to do it. So what he did was he stole the Spirit of Vengeance from Johnny and put it in him. And now he can go as the Spirit of Vengeance and perform this ritual. So that's what's happening. And then Johnny, meanwhile, uh, it has to go after him. And of course, Johnny is no match for the Ghost Rider. But that's what I loved about this. It reminded me of that movie... Um, Pumpkinhead, um, which obviously this came out before Pumpkinhead, uh, but uh, so I wonder if Pumpkinhead took any uh, you know motivation or inspiration from this. But uh, Johnny realizes that if he hurts himself, he can hurt the Ghost Rider, and then vice versa. If the Ghost Rider gets hurt, it hurts Johnny. So uh, so Johnny ramps off this motorcycle and like lands and cracks his leg, and that hurts the the Ghost Rider's leg. And then but before he can really enact on that, the Ghost Rider chains him up and he's like, "You're gonna sit here and you're gonna watch us do this ritual." But since he you know couldn't get a lot of leverage because he hurt his leg, he didn't chain Johnny up too too well. Well, and so Johnny was able to break through the chains and come after Ghost Rider. And what he does, he grabs this mythical sword that was going to be used in the sacrifice and he stabs Ghost Rider right through the chest. And of course, when he does that, it also kills Johnny too. So Johnny uh, takes the brunt of the pain and, the, and you know, that comes from the sword being uh, thrust through. So you have Azaza or Azazia here who is now killed because he was a spirit of vengeance. And that sword was some kind of magic weapon that could cut through the spirit of vengeance. So it kills Azazia, it kills the spirit of vengeance, sends it back to hell. And then it also kills Johnny right 
in front of the Pope. And the Pope is sitting there going, what the F? And meanwhile, the Watcher is going, yep, and that's what happened in this alternate universe. But the, again, it's an alternate universe. It's not what really happened. And that's kind of the whole thing about what if is that it was kind of it's it was like Marvel's version of the Twilight Zone. So it was like, wouldn't that have been interesting if that happened? And, you know, but it didn't. So now we can go back and enjoy more Johnny Blaze stories. But this is a path that could have happened and did happen in this alternate universe. So, yeah, I thought it was really good. I think these are $7.99. And although I think that's really steep, I wish these were $4.99, especially since they're just all reprints of older stuff. I understand page count and quality is better, but still, like, DC puts out those 100-page books for $4.99, and they're amazing, and they come with a lot of reprint stuff and a little bit of new material at the front. This is only reprints, so I feel like they could at least, and it's less pages, I feel like they could match the $4.99 price point. So hopefully Marvel will in the future, uh, you know, ch change that, but I, I doubt they will. But they've been putting these out for certain characters for Marvel's 80th anniversary, and I highly recommend checking out any Marvel tales of characters that you yourself are super interested in. Check them out. I think there's Fantastic Four ones out now and a bunch of other characters. So go check them out. And then check this one out too for you Ghost Rider fans out there. It's a great way to relearn who Johnny Blaze is. You get an origin story in there. You see him interact with some of the Marvel Universe. And that'll set you up even more for him in the main book that's out now, uh, which I highly recommend as well. So please let me know your thoughts down below if you've read these stories before, if you read the, the new current series. Let me know all your thoughts down below. And if you haven't, please go read them yourself and let me know your thoughts in the comments down below and we'll continue our conversation down there. Thanks so much for watching the show. As always, like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff, and I'll see you in hell. Peace.